And the victory's been won 10,000 years, and we've just begun. We will just begin to sing love's sweet story. It's a song that the angels cannot sing. I'm redeemed by yeah. the blood of my Savior. And 10,000 years or more, I'll praise his name. Yeah. 10,000 years will just be started. 10,000 years, we've just begun. Yeah. The battle's over. And the victory's been won yes. 10,000 years, and we've just begun. Yes. I once was sad and lonely, I felt so all alone, until I asked the Lord to take control. He gave to me an answer and said that I was free. He cleansed my heart and then he blessed my soul. Yeah. I know I'm safe. Oh, yes, I know I'm safe. I feel the Holy Spirit deep inside. Yeah. I know I'm safe. Oh, yes, I know I'm safe. I'll always keep my Savior by my side. Yeah. I walked alone in darkness. I could not see the light. The Lord forgave my sins and turned me round. Yeah. He filled my heart with sunshine and gave to me a song. Yeah. He put my weary feet on higher ground. Yeah. Oh, yes, I know I'm saved. Oh, yes, I know I'm saved. I feel the Holy Spirit deep inside. Oh, yes, I know I'm saved. Oh, yes, I know I'm saved. I'll always keep my Savior by my side. I want to live for Jesus and tell of his great love and thank him for his blessings every day. Yeah. He gave to me contentment and filled my heart with joy. Now in his loving kindness I shall stay. Yeah. Oh yes, I know I'm saved. Oh yes, I know I'm saved. I feel the Holy Spirit deep inside. Yeah. I know I'm saved. Oh, yes, I know I'm saved. I'll always keep my Savior by my side. Well, he may know that he went on some church to preach and said, the uh, preacher's wife asked him, he said, uh, have you ever read the 151st Psalm? He said, well, I didn't know that there was one. He said, if you preach short, you get to preach again. He said, I didn't preach short and I never got invited back. He said, I'm going to preach again and be short. <laughs> Bless you, Lord. I started when I first asked him by call to preach. We had a Friday night revival, they called it, the Ball Road Baptist Church. And I'd run from a call to preach for about a year and a half, I guess. And I'd preach in Sunday school and on the streets and everything else. I never had an ounce of call. And they would have young preachers preach for about 10 or 15 minutes apiece. Have singers in between, then they have a seasoned pastor at the end bring the final message. Man, what meetings those were, I don't know how many people were saved. And, Answered the call to preach and surrendered to serving God, and it was it was a blessing. And I sit on the front row with a suit and tie on for months, just waiting on the preacher to call me to come preach, and he never did. And I was like God said, well, he don't know that you're a preacher. So, so either way, that was all right. So then I preached for about ten or fifteen minutes in several of those meetings, and then I started preaching on the radio and had to learn to preach real fast. You got to be able to say a lot in fifteen minutes to get anything out. But I don't know. I just want to just be shut up sometimes. It's a few minutes or hours or whatever. Just prepare. With us, God will be good. Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10, you'll find the reading for this evening. I'm going to read just a couple of verses in your hearing and deal with just a couple of words that's been on our hearts throughout the week this week. Acts chapter 10, verse number 1. The Bible said there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man, and one that feared God with all his house, which which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. Yeah. He saw in a vision, evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was sore, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for memorial before God. Amen. We thank you and we praise you this evening, Lord. We just ask you to meet with us. Bless hearts and homes, save sinners, encourage saints. 
We'll praise you in it through it and for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. But as I said, I've thought this week about Memorial Day and, and what it really means. I, a lot of people, it's just another day off work or another day at the lake or day at the mountains. And that's fine to go enjoy things. And, but I think we need to stop and, and realize what it was for. I thought how wonderful it was, this country. is still the greatest nation as far as I'm concerned that's ever been formed. One that's God's blessed and one that's God honored. One that God's honored, but one that's turned its back on God and fixing to find itself in trouble. That's another story, another message for another day. But how wonderful it was we had people with some insight that would set together a day and, and said, so we just want to stop and we want to think about our country. And, and our country would be nothing without the men and women that's been willing to lay down their life for it. And I'm so glad for that. They, they served here and abroad. And people said, well, I'm not for war and I'm against war. And that's fine and well. I'm not saying go pick on somebody to start something, but you got to stand for something. And they went over there and they fought. They'd have been here fighting. It's the reality of this thing, and, and it will be before it's over, but that's okay, but, but thank God for all those, and I'm glad for the freedom that we have, and, and the protection, the provision we have as Americans, and, and I don't take that lightly tonight, saying I'm an American, I'm proud to be an American, I'm not apologizing to anybody that I was born in this country, and I'm not apologizing to anybody for the freedoms that we've had, sure she's messed up and made mistakes and done things wrong, but God's blessed this thing because it was founded on Him. And I'm glad for that. I'm glad for that. Thank God for that. But but it, it costs a great price. Freedom doesn't come free. It doesn't come free. It costs a lot for you and I to have what we have, the freedoms and the liberties and, and all these things. And I'm so glad for them. But, but many times we forget the grace price that was paid. Many times we, we pity party and say, well, I didn't get things my way. And, and we think how bad that we've got. Hey, it's been far worse than you and I have ever had it. But I'm glad there was some willing to stand for what was right. Even in a time when it seemed wrong, amen, they still stood for what was right. But, but all these, it seems that so many times these men and women have been forgotten about. They've been forsaken. They've been abandoned. And, and it seems like if you wasn't careful that their work and their labor was in vain. And it seems like it's for no cause. But because of this memorial holiday, we can take time to remember and to appreciate their service. But then I kind of began to look from a physical aspect to a spiritual and I began to think about all those that, that have served God, that have loved God, and have worked and labored for God, and they've gone on. And, and these generations that have come up behind them never knew what these men and what these women did and, and the things they suffered for. I think about all the martyrs that went to the stake for this blessed book that I hold in my hand. And, and I'm so appreciative of what they was willing to go through so you and I might have a copy yeah, of the gospel. But it seems like they, they've been forgotten. They've given their whole life. And, and now it seems like it's all in vain. But even if you and I tonight, as bad as it would be, would forget. I'm glad that God still remembers. Yeah. Amen. I'm glad that God still remembers. I, that yeah. stuck out in my verse right there in the latter part of that Let verse 4. When he said, thy prayers and thine alms are come up for memorial before God. Yeah. He's saying, hey, God remembers. Aren't you glad that, I'm glad there's some things that he forgets too, aren't you? I'm glad that our sin's been cast in the depths of the sea and, and it's in a bag behind his back. But I'm glad God remembers our service tonight. And I'm glad that God remembers all the things that matter tonight. And I'm glad he rewards faithful service, aren't you? Preacher, what are you talking about? I don't know a whole lot about Cornelius. I don't know that he's ever mentioned Brother Woody, other than right here in this text, I've never found him. There's many that say he could have been the first Gentile that was ever saved and brought into the church. And, and how wonderful that is. But, but I, I know that he gave alms to people. I know that he gave handouts and he did good deeds and had some good works about him, even though it was lost. I know that he prayed God and his whole house feared God. But the thing is, I don't know how long he'd been praying. I don't even know what he was praying for. I have no idea what this man faced or what he went through. And the Gentiles wasn't treated very well. They, they were second class citizens. At best. They were dogs, Jesus said. said it wasn't me to give the children's bread to dogs. But this man still feared the love of God. No matter how the world treated him. He realized it wasn't about what you do to me or what this one does to me or what that one does to me. But it's about what God's done for me. People today give in and give up and they quit and they do all these things when they hurt my feelings. And I'm not making excuses. A church can be one of the saddest, roughest places that there is. But it's not based on me and you. It's based on Calvary. It's based on the love that was shown. It's based on the blood that was shed. It's based on the grace of an almighty God loving sinful man and who he is. That's what it's based on. It's not about my situation. It's not about my circumstance. It's not about my goodness. I've talked to somebody, well, people preach, if I could just get what I deserve, you deserve to be in hell with your back broke. 
even know what he's praying for, but I'm glad God knows. Praise the Lord. Amen. Preacher, what are you saying? I don't know what you're facing tonight. I don't know what you're going through tonight. I don't know what your tomorrow holds, but I know who holds your tomorrow. Yeah. And, and people say, I know who holds your hand. No, he holds far more than my hand, friend. He's got me engraved in the palm of his hand. And he's never lost a one. Amen. I serve one tonight that's never lost a battle. One that's never stepped into an operating room that says no hope. One that's cured no broken hearts. The doctors have broken bodies, friend. I'm talking about Jesus. And he remembers you. Amen. And he remembers you. Amen. He remembers who you are. He remembers what you He knows what we have need of before we yes. even ask. Amen. Why is that? Because he knows what I need even when I don't. Yes. Amen. Amen. Have you ever been in days you got up and you just didn't feel good and you just didn't feel right or whatever? Well, you had no you idea what was going on with you. No idea what you needed. God did. Right. And the reality is he'd already prepared for it. He'd already made a way for you. He'd already taken care of you. Yeah. I think about how Jesus talked about, about Israel, how they, how they would gather them together as a mother hen does her brood and gather them under his wings, but, but they would not. I remember waking up in the morning, had a good mama, and she'd have breakfast ready and served and sitting there on the table when I woke up and I'd smell some good food and, and she'd feed me and take care of me. And God wakes me up every morning and he puts breath in my body and he allows me to get out of bed and he clothes me. And he leaves me. And he guides me. And he takes real good care of me, honey. I'm talking about a faithful God. And though I forget him, he's never forgotten about me. How many times do we read throughout the Old Testament and they forgot the Lord their God? And they forgot the Lord their God. In my mind, I know that it's not literally, but I think as a typology today, we could fit America right there where Israel once has been with the blessings and the benefits of God. And, and when we're following after God, when we're serving God, when we're surrendering to God, man, oh, glory's waving high and proud, and, and we're a blessed generation and a blessed nation, but then we forget about God, you know, and we find ourselves in captivity. We find ourselves in bondage. We find ourselves in trouble. Friend, I've got news for you. She keeps going down the path she's going tonight. She ain't going to go much further. Right? She ain't going to go much further. I've read through this book over in the book of Revelation and I've looked and I've talked to men that studied this thing for years and, and they said, Preacher, we got a problem. We cannot find America in the book of the Revelation. What does that mean? There's a good chance that in the last day, which is very soon, that America is no longer America. If people don't stand up tonight, church, there won't be no standing up. That ain't the message, but it's free, amen. Hallelujah. But Cornelius remained faithful. He just kept praying. He just kept giving. He just kept doing. He kept trusting. He didn't even know God. But he said, man, I fear him. I trust him. I believe. And when the time was right, the angel of the Lord came about to where he was. And he was sore afraid. He was feared just like anybody else had seen him. And he said, hey, God's thought on you. Can you think about that tonight? Little old me, some little old nothing. A speck of dirt tonight. But God thought about me. And God thought about you. And he cared enough to send his only begotten son to lean down an old rugged cross and lay down his life that you might have life and that you might have life abundantly. Amen. What a Savior! What a Savior. Thank you, Lord. Preacher, what are you saying? Nobody else might not even know who Cornelius was. But God knew who he was. So many times we try to serve God and we try to worship God and we try to praise God. And man, the devil, just like we heard in Sunday school this morning, comes and attacks and he offends and he steals and he kills and he destroys and he does all this stuff. And you know why he tells us that our work's not in vain, our labor's not in vain? Because we'll start thinking that it is. God knew what Cornelius was doing. And he said, son, you know what? I'm fixing to reward you for your faith. I've got news for you. God's rewarded me and blessed me and been good to me. I am not a health, wealth, and prosperity preacher, but I believe God honors faithfulness. Yeah. I believe we could start in Genesis and we could go to Revelation and we'd find a thrice holy God that loves sinners and one that blessed them and encouraged them and strengthened them and helped them and provided for them and took care of them from the beginning yeah. to the end. Yeah. Preacher, what are you saying? I'm telling you, we must be faithful to the work of God. Yeah. If we want the blessings of God in our lives. 
1 Corinthians chapter 15, <coughs> verse 58. He said, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. 1 John chapter 3, verse 18. He said, My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Amen. James chapter 1, verse 25. He said, But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, continue therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Amen. God said, if you'll do it, I'll bless you for it. Amen. He saved us just to do it. We're not Amen. saved by good works. We're saved unto good works. Amen. We were dead in trespasses and sins, and he quickened us, gave us life Amen. when he saved us, Amen. that we might be able to work and labor for him. And now he says, I'm going to reward you just for doing with what I gave you. Amen. What a Savior. Amen. What a Savior. Thank you, Lord. Many times we find ourselves in a valley, lonely and discouraged. That is a reality. But God will remember. I know many have served long and hard. Many have grown weary and well-doing and they begin to faint. But we must wait upon the Lord if we're going to renew our strength. We must continue serving and keep on keeping on. Preacher, what are you talking about? I think about when the wars, all the wars that have come and the men and women have went overseas and they've battled and they've fought. And when they come back, they used to have parades. They used to have all these things. Welcome them back in town. And they used to have that. Now they get spit on. Now they get cursed at. Now they get mistreated and abused just for serving faithfully. It's the same way with the child of God. Is it not? The one you love the most and the one you try your hardest to win and try your most to bring is the first one that will break your heart. They're the first one that will discourage you. They're the first one that will hurt you. Many forgot about the great fight for this great cause. Now many mock and injure the soldiers. I know that you're tired. And times we seem defeated. But when the time comes, God will remember you. Preacher, what do you mean? Let me give you three or four things and I'm done tonight. I thought about a man named Noah. Anybody remember Noah? Yeah. God told him, said, I want you to go out and I want you to build me an ark. Yeah. I, and according to the scripture, there's nowhere I've read, you correct me, I've never read one word about rain or anything falling upon the earth at this point in time. But he said, no, I want you to go out and I want you to build this ark and, and I'm going to give you this book right here and it's going to tell you how tall and how long and how wide and, and exactly how to build it and I want you to build it according to my specs, if you will, and I'm going to bless that thing. There's a storm that's going to come one day after a little while, but I'm going to have you inside and you're going to be protected acting from that storm. And he went out there and he was singing, working on a bill. And man, he just a building this ark. He had no clue what was going on. He just trying to be faithful and obedient yeah. to God. Man, he's nailing up the boards, doing all this. He's told his wife, he's told his kids, hey, there's a storm we're going to come. And he's just building on this thing and building on this thing. And God said, I tell you what, I want you to put a window up toward the top. That way you can, I can still see down there to where you are and you can still see me. Aren't you glad to do the storms of life? We can close this physical eyes and spiritually we can see him and we can feel him and we can still find him even though we've been tossed to and fro though the world around us has been destroyed there's still a God in heaven Amen. and he's still taking care of his children Amen. Amen. he preached there's a storm that's going to come and they said, well, you know, I've heard this all my life, and I've heard that all my life, and, and it's all still the same ever since the creation. Everything's been the same. Nothing's changed. Nothing's been any different. And God said, I want you to go out and get the animals, and I want you to put them in. And he finally told Noah and Miss Noah there, said, y'all just go ahead and go inside. When they went inside there, hey, I want you to notice Noah did not shut the door. The Bible said, God shut the door. Hey, there's coming a day to this speciation of grace as you and I know it. God God's going to shut the door. He's not always going to strive with man, honey. But he's going to pull you and I up out of this place for him. I'm glad I'm in that ark tonight. They want Amen. you. Amen. It might get tossed to and fro, but that old ship, those eyes Amen. still going to keep saying. Amen. Amen. But you come over there in the book of Genesis chapter 6, I think it's around verse 30, when that boat's being tossed to and fro right there in the midst of that storm. You know what the Bible said? And God remembered Noah. Amen. Aren't you glad we're in the storms of life? When the storms of life are raging, stand by me. Amen. Thou lily of the valley, stand by me. I'm glad he stands by us, aren't you? And I'm glad he remembers us. Yeah. 
when your ship's being tossed to and fro, when the storms of life are there, you think nobody cares and nothing else matters, church. God remembers. God remembers. Thank you, Lord. Richard, what do you say? Saying oftentimes our lives can get out of control. Yeah. Oftentimes we can be weak and we can be weary and we can be tired. And the first thing the devil says is nobody cares and it don't matter. You don't matter who are you. Can I tell you who I am tonight for just a few minutes? I'm a child of the king. I'm one that's laid. He laid down everything he had just for me. Amen. I'm one of them that was hit out in the field when he sold everything that he had just to purchase me. And no, he didn't get much. Amen. I'm glad I got it all. Amen. I'm royalty standing before for you tonight by His grace and mercy. Amen. I'm redeemed. Amen. Amen. But you don't look like much. I'm not. I sure didn't cost a whole lot. Heaven bankrupted itself just for me. And what do you think about that? The devil will tell you something. I, li I like him once in a while. I like to talk with him. He comes and he tells me this and he tells me that and he tells me the other. He starts telling me about my past. I'm like, time now. I don't really want to go back down that road to you. Right. Let's talk about the future. Yeah. One day after a while, I'm going to stand before him, amen. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, amen. And I'm going to rule and reign with him for a thousand years. And you, my friend, are going to be bound and cast into the lake of fire, amen, to be remembered no more. And I'm going to live on forever with him. Yeah. So it ain't as bad as the devil lets on to be. I am. Thought about Noah. Thought about a young lady called Rachel. If I remember her old Jacob, there was a trickster. Yeah. He ran off after he tricked his daddy and after he tricked his brother. Yeah. Scared for his life, ran off to his boy. uncle Laban's house. And, and he got over there. No, Laban was a pretty good trickster yeah. himself, he thought, amen. He said, I love Rachel. He said, you know, she was fair upon the eyes. And said, said Rachel wasn't so easy to look upon. And y'all take that for what it is. That's what the Bible said. So he worked those seven years, amen, to get Rachel the love of his life. And when it was over, Laban said, hey, I can't give you my old younger daughter without the older one being married. She got to marry her. Yeah. So he married He married her. Married Lay. Worked seven more years to marry Rachel. Amen. And for the, after those seven years was over, Lay ended up having these children for him. Yeah. And he loved Rachel far more than he ever did Lay, but she couldn't Amen. conceive. Yeah. She went in there and she laid it down before God in the temple one day and she began to pray and, and ask God to intercede and move. And you know what the Bible said? You guessed it. And God remembered Rachel. Amen. And he opened up her womb as it was. Aren't you glad that God remembers our children and that God remembers our families and God takes care of us. Amen. Even when the world's beating us up in madness, I'm glad God remembers. God remembers. Hey. I was saying God remembered and he opened her one. What a blessing. What a blessing that is. Yeah. Preacher, what are you saying? I'm saying God will remember. You just pray and seek after God and God will bless you. Psalm 37, 4 said this, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of thine heart. Yeah. And then health, wealth, and prosperity, Pimp says God will give you a million dollars in a mansion, whatever you desire. That's not what he said. He said if you desire yourself in the Lord, that means you're seeking after his work, you're seeking after his will, and you're serving him, and God's going to give you whatever you need to complete the task that he gives you. I thought about a young man named Elijah. Any of y'all remember him? Here he went up on the mountain and he was preaching up there on the mountain and they had a little contest up there, the prophets of the grove and the prophets of Baal and, and God sent down fire and smote them all yeah. and he ran from old Jezebel and hid as it was out there and there was a great famine come into the land and when that famine come, here he was down there next to an old brook and, and it wasn't going to be anything that was going to dry up and go away but God sent a raven as it was. I'm glad, can I tell you about the raven for just a minute? The first time I ever remember reading about a raven in the Bible, brother he was on the ark with Noah. And God sent that raven, and that raven never did come back. He failed God and he went away. But I'm glad we serve God a second chances, aren't you? This time that raven, he come and he was faithful. And he fed the man of God and he took care of the man of God. And he blessed the man of God. Aren't you glad that failing's not final with the Father? Amen. Aren't you glad He just picks up our sin and He wipes it off and, and He loves us and lets us continue to go? Hey, let's be honest tonight, church. If God, if failure was final, we don't have to throw away our Bibles and quit. But I'm glad God gave us a place of repentance and we don't have to crawl back. He said He was faithful and just to forgive us of all unrighteousness. Amen. Aren't you glad for that? Bless you, Lord. That raven came.
him and fed him until they took Lord. care of him. No doubt he looked down there and he thought, Lord, this brook's getting dry. Lord, there probably ain't a whole lot more, a few, a few more days left. All there's going to be left in this thing. God said to him, said, hey, I was saying, God, remember Elijah. Yeah. He said, I tell you what, I want you to go. God's got a sense of humor. Yeah. Uh, there's two or three times I know if I've read the Bible where God sat upon the thrones in the heavens and he said, ha, ha, ha. God's got a sense of humor. Well, he said, Lord. So here comes God with a message to Elijah. And if I was Elijah, I'd say, boy, he's going to send me to the king's palace. He's going to send me to a millionaire. He's going to send me to somebody that's got truckloads of water and all sorts of food. And I'm never going to hunger. I'm never going to thirst. That's not the way God does things. So he said, I tell you what I want you to do, Elijah. I want you to go over here in this city. And there's a certain widow woman over there. And she's got a young boy. And I want you to just go to her. Well, maybe her husband was rich. Maybe, you know, they've got all sorts of money. I, I don't know what he's thinking at this point in time. And, and he starts hoofing it on over that way. And he gets over that way and he comes up to the gate. And, and this lady's out in the yard picking up sticks. What in the world are you doing out here? He said, I'm gathering up the last of our meal and the last of our oil. And I'm going to make me and my son a cake. And, and we're going to eat it and die. Yeah. Wait a minute. Time out, God. This ain't my plan. God says, I know, but it's mine. Yeah. But it's mine. Little as much when God's in it. And he said, well, I tell you what. He said, you go in there and make me a cake. And as the Lord liveth, God's going to take care. And the oil stayed and the meal stayed. And God was faithful. He provided. Why? Because he takes care of his children. Aren't you glad, even though in our life it seems like a lot of times we're valley to valley, wilderness to wilderness. But God always puts us in a place yeah. of provision. Yeah. Sometimes the brook dries up. Yeah. But God's always well, got another place, another Amen. place. Amen. I thought about that thief hanging on the cross next to Jesus. Uh -huh. And he cried out, Remember me. Remember me. Yeah. It first started out there, it was both railing on him. It was both going through all these things. And, and he heard the seven sayings as Jesus was on the cross, no doubt. And he heard those things. And, and he finally just spoke up and told that fellow on the other side, We deserve what we're getting here. This just man's done nothing wrong. Lord, when you come into your kingdom, would you remember me? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm glad he said this day, well, yeah. Thou shalt live with me in paradise. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad it's not a 12 step program. I'm glad you don't have to give so much or do so much. You don't have to do any of those things. I'm glad we can trust and obey. Amen. I'm glad we're saved by grace through faith, not the works as any man said boast. I'm glad it's a gift of God. And I'm glad the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. Amen. I'm glad He doesn't take it away. Hallelujah. Preacher, what are you saying? I'm saying, God, remember us even when we're about to die. If we've been filthy, wretched, rotten, sin. I've seen them on their deathbed laying there done wicked things in their life. And God's grace and mercy was just as good and as real at that point in time as it was. Yeah. I'm glad for justification, aren't you? Amen. Just as if I'd never sinned. I'm glad he makes it that way, aren't you? I began to think he, he cared and he remembered him as he was hanging there dying on the cross. Yes. I don't know what it'll be like. I, I'm probably like a Ebenezer Scrooge. I'll be the one that dies alone all by myself because I'm so mean and hateful and hurtful and all those things. But I'm glad God will be right there. Amen. Precious in the sight of the Lord Amen. is the death of one of his saints. God will be there and he'll remember me. Amen. I thought about Paul in Acts chapter 27, one of my favorite chapters in the whole Bible. Right in the midst of the storm in a time of darkness, when all hope that they should be saved was lost. Mm -hmm. All it took a long abstinence. Amen. Sometimes you just got to get away from your problem and just give it to God. Mm -hmm. Amen. He went down there and he said, The angel of the Lord, of whom I am and who I serve. Wait a minute. He's not of an angel, he's of God. So who was the angel standing there? Mm -hmm. Think about that. But then he goes on and he said, And the Lord stood by me. Amen. God knows when we're in trouble. God knows when we're burdened. God knows when we're weighted down with the burdens and the cares of this life. God knows they go on over the book of Acts there a little bit further. And he said, at first call, no man stood with me. He said, but God stood with me. Hey, friends, for sake, brethren, they put your clergy, may criticize. But I'm glad there's a faithful friend, honey. And he'll stand with you to this thing's done. Why? Wow, because he remembers us. Yes. He remembers us and he cares for us. 
I'm glad when the storms of life come, yeah. it's ready to calm all of our fears. Thank you, Lord. I thought about John the Isle of Yes. Though he'd been cast out and left yeah. to die, Hollywood would draw this picture yeah. of him out on this island with all Thank these people. Lord. Church, that ain't reality. They cast him out to get him to shut up and quit getting folks saved. They ain't going to put him out there, out there with a bunch of people to preach the gospel to. So he's out there all alone and outcast on life. But I'm glad your Lord remembered him. He looked Amen. up and he seen one come walk. Yeah. Uh huh. He seen one to come walk and, and he was so fearful he fell upon his face as a dead man. But when Jesus got there, he said, John, I want you to know something. He said, I'm the first and the last. Amen. I'm the first and the last. I'm he who liveth and was dead. And behold, I'm alive and I'm alive forevermore. And I've got the keys to death and hell. Amen. What does that mean exactly, church? That means he's still in control. He's still driving the ship, honey. He's still got the keys to this thing. He's still leading to where he wants her to go. He's still going to take care of it. And the devil can't take me any further than he allows me. I'm glad we've still got a hedge of protection built about us. Why? Because he remembers. He remembers. Why was that so important that he told him who he was? Because sometimes we do He was the first one that ever loved me. He loved me before I was born, before I was conceived. He bled and died for me before the foundation of the world. And if everybody else says they don't love me, don't ever want to be around with me, he'll be the last one that'll love me and care about me. Huh? And he proved by shaking those keys and rattling those keys right there. But he still got victory. He was victorious. Amen. When he hung there on the cross, the last thing that he said is, It is finished. Amen. I'm glad it preacher, what is it? That's the plan of salvation. That's deliverance for you and I. That's ensuring we have a home in heaven. That's ensuring that we'll never die lost without him with our eyes in heaven. When we're all alone, everyone else has left us. I'm glad he's there. Hallelujah. He promised seven times. Throughout the Bible, I will never leave you. Amen. I will never forsake you. Amen. Two of those times, he said, I'll never fail you. Aren't you glad that we serve a God tonight that never fails? Amen. One that's never come short. One that's Amen. never erred. One that's never made a mistake. One that has always been faithful. Amen. That's who he is. That's what he does. He said, there is a friend that loveth it all times. Aren't you glad that loveth it? I there's some people that, I, that that were my friends in this life, in this world, that I've hurt. Boy, they, they don't want anything to do with me. I was lost oh, in them. Lord. Yeah. They claim to be my friends, and I wronged them. You can't talk to them to this day. Mm -hmm. They said, we don't love you anymore. We don't care about you. Oh, I've talked to husbands and wives, been together 20, 30, 40, 50 years, and said, we just fell out of love. We don't love anymore. But before I was born, he loved me. Amen. And after I leave this world, he'll still love me. Why? Because God is love. Amen. Amen. Psalm 78, 35. The Bible said they remembered that God was their rock and their redeemer. Mm -hmm. And you know what happened? Israel came out of bondage. Amen. Church, if we just remember who God is tonight. God remembers us. He's yeah. never forgot about us one time. The very hairs of our head, he said, was numbered. Mm -hmm. The footsteps of a good man, he said, were are doing order. Amen. He knows all about us. Amen. Amen. It's time Amen. you and I sent to remember God. I may remember God. Brother Lance Carpenter went on to visit the Lord a few years back. He'd been a big songwriter in Nashville country music for years. Been married three times. His life, wife left him and come back to Tennessee. He chased her back and pretended he was going to get things right or whatever so they could stay together. She said, well, you meet me at church in the morning if you want to, want to be around me or whatever. He went in that church house. You know what happened? God got a hold of him right there on the front row. Right. Dragged him to the altar and saved him. He yeah. never heard another country yeah. song. Never played for the God. Never played for the devil again. But got right with God and wrote many, many, many songs yeah. for Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. One of the songs that he wrote, a wonderful song. He's been known by many of the bigger yeah. artists, I guess. Called He Will Remember Me. It's about an older lady that had dementia or Alzheimer's and her husband goes to visit her every morning and she don't even know his name. 
And he said, but the only comfort that I, he had through it all was even though she didn't remember him, that, that God still remembered. Amen. And so if the day comes that I can't remember God, you know what? He'll remember me. Amen. I'm glad to know that he still remembers yes. don't you. <laughs> Preacher, what are you saying? I'm saying this tonight, and I'm finished. Yeah. The same God that saved you yeah. is faithful, and he's going to take care yeah. of you. Amen. Hallelujah. If you'll just put your faith and your trust in him, yes. just keep giving, giving your all to him. He won't forget. He won't forget. Amen. That prayer that you've been praying, that might be the next one God brings to us. Remember. Yeah. Think about how wonderful that would be to see kids, grandkids, husbands, yeah. wives, neighbors, co-workers walk through that door tonight or get that yeah. phone call when you go outside and say, Papa, I just want you to know this. Yeah. God saved me. I want you to know this. Hey, he's still God, church. Amen. When he brought it to remember, it's that mean he answered yeah. it. Preach evil. That means that he answered it. Amen. I preach you, I've been praying, I've been praying. Well, don't give up before God shows up. This is not like Burger King. It's not my way right away. Jesus is the way, the truth, well, and the life. And it'll be done in his time, but it'll be done right. He hadn't forgot about you. Well, you and your need will be brought to well, remembrance. You'll just remain faithful. Yeah. God can and will bless you. Not because you're good, but because He is. Amen. Yeah. Because He is. Amen. On this day of remembrance, I, I'm finished. Bless you, Lord. I'm finished. I ask you this tonight. Bless you, Lord. Do you still believe that God's going to answer that prayer? Amen. Amen. I, Amen. Can I be honest? I guess that's okay, isn't it? <laughs> I've prayed a lot of prayers for a long time. Bless you, Lord. Sometimes I pray just because that's what we do. Not because I'm trusting God with it. Not because I'm truly surrendering and giving it to God. I just pray because that's what Christian folks ought to do. But there's some times that I get down and I pray because that's the only thing I can do. And that prayer seems like it goes a lot further than the one that I just pray. Church, it's time we get serious about praying. May not always pray, not faint. I'm afraid we faint. I'm afraid we've about laid down our cross. I'm afraid we've about given up before it's over, amen. We used to we used to watch movies sometimes and go, and as soon as I thought it was over, I'd get up and leave, and it was over, and you'd talk to people, and they'd say, you see this part? i say, no. What are you talking about? And they said, well, it was right there at the very end, so I got up before it was over. Preacher, why would you bring something like that in? I'd hate to get to heaven and God say, I was fixing to move, I was fixing to do that. But you could ask him. Yeah. You have not because you ask not. Yeah. When you ask, you ask me. Yeah. Church, it's time we get serious about praying. Yeah. Amen. We're living in troubled times. We're living in perilous times. Yeah. If you want to come tonight, you want to ask God to, to help you with whatever it is you're facing and going through. There's been things that I've prayed throughout my life and throughout the ministry that God's given me that I forgot I prayed. Yeah. But you know what? God still remembered and answered. Amen. Maybe you just want to come around this altar tonight and you just yeah. want to thank God for remembering Bless him. for the good care and compassion and kindness Amen. he showed to you. Church, he's worthy tonight. Amen. He's worthy tonight to be remembered. I want to remember what he's done for me. It's easy to look back and remember the troubles and the burdens and the cares and the struggles of this life. But you know what? God's been there through every one of them. And he's brought us through. And he's brought us through. And he's delivered. Whatever it is we're facing and going through tonight, the same God's going to take care of us. If you've got need of this altar tonight, I ask you to come. Maybe God's brought something to your mind that you used to pray about. Maybe you don't pray like you used to. 